Hi. I'm glad you could join me today because it's a fantastic day and I thought today we'd just do a beautiful little painting together. So I tell you what, let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've already done up here. I have my standard old canvas up here. Now I use an 18 by 24 inch because it fits the television screen pretty good, but you, you use whatever you want. And I've just taken black gesso and painted some basic shapes here. Boy, that's looks like a big design in there. Just some basic shapes. I have some ideas of where I want some little trees to be. The black gesso is allowed to dry completely. And then on top of that, this time I've taken a little bit of liquid clear and very, very small amount. And I put a little of that on there and it makes putting a dark color on a transparent color much, much easier. And for the transparent color, we've just used a mixture of alizarin crimson and a little phthalo blue in it to make sort of a lavender color. And I've covered the entire dark area with that lavender up here, just liquid white, okay? I know that seems like a lot, but it's really not. Liquid white and a little bit of transparent color. In fact, one of the biggest questions I get is how do I tell if a color is transparent? Well, the easy way is to take a little and put it on a black canvas. If it still looks black, it's transparent enough for what we're doing. It may not be totally transparent, but sometimes semi-transparent is, is sufficient for what we're doing. If you put it on here, a little color, and say like white, it's very opaque. You put it on here and it looks white, then it's not transparent enough for what we're doing, okay? Good. Let's just have some fun today. Let's start with the old two inch brush. I'm gonna go into a little touch of phthalo blue. Just small amount, I don't want much. Just tap it into the bristles. And maybe, 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 yeah, right up here. We'll just put in a little touch of sky. I really do not want to have a great deal here. About like so, that's enough. I'm going to wash the old brush. Very little color up there. <laughs> There's the fun part. I thought today we'll take a little titanium white, a little touch of yellow ochre in it, just a little bit. Just want to make a nice little glow back here. And right in here, we'll just put that nice yellow ochre with a little titanium white, just in those light areas and just sort of let them blend together gently. Be very careful though, because yellow ochre mixed with phthalo blue will make a bright green. So don't use very much of either color. And be very, very careful. That's one of the reasons I've used lavender in here is because if the lavender touches the yellow, then all that happens is it turns a nice brownish color. And we don't mind that today. Okay, now I'll clean off the old brush again. Now then, one of the nice things about using the black gesso is that it paints all of the dark areas for you. So I'm going to just take this old two inch brush and tap into a little bit of that nice lavender color that I've covered the black areas with. And I'm going to just begin tapping in some very basic little shapes. There, very basic, virtually no paint on the brush. I mean, this is just almost no paint because you can pick up whatever you need off this area where you've already put it. Begin, begin forming some very, very basic little tree shapes. Very basic. That's all we're looking for, it's just general shapes. We're not looking for detail or anything else at this point. All we're looking for is these nice basic shapes. In here, just all kinds of little background things. Very soft, very gentle, very quiet. You can just barely see them in places. Just let them whisper at you. But all the time, see the liquid white is mixing with a color it's on here, then that's all mixing with a color here. And you get these beautiful, beautiful blended effects automatically. There. If you try to do this, in traditional painting methods, it would take you a long, long time to create this beautiful, misty effect. And here, as you know, if I go over 30 minutes, well, they have no sense of humor at all. There. But already you can see all kinds of little background trees and just, just little happy things happening. And virtually, you have done nothing. All you've done is spread a little color out. Okay, there. 
and you begin seeing shape and form as you do this. And when you're doing it at home, don't just try to copy what I've done here. Look at your painting, because every single painting will be different, it'll be unique. We don't use any patterns here. We don't trace pictures on here and then try to just fill in the blocks. We really teach you how to be creative, how to use your imagination. If you just trace a painting on a canvas and, and do it, just, you know, all you've done is taken somebody else's idea and filled in the block. I want to teach you how to create your own masterpieces. Okay, now then, just beat it to knock off the excess paint. And the more you do this, the softer it'll become. It'll just get so soft that it just absolutely disappears at a while. Wipe the brush on a paper towel or old rag if you have it. But look at that. I just love these very soft blended effects. All right. Now then, tell you what let's do. Tell you what let's do. Let me find my liner brush. We're going to some paint thinner, some paint thinner. And I want to make a paint here that's very thin very, very thin. It'll literally run right on the palette here if we're not careful. It's consistency of ink. Turn the bristles, bring it to a nice sharp point. And this liner brush has very, very long bristles on it, so it holds a lot of paint. Now then, we want to put the indication just here and there of a little trunk, a few limbs, some sticks, some twigs, little happy things in here. There we go. See them? Just put them in wherever you think they might live. There, wherever you want them. And we're using exactly the same color that we made the trees out of. So it doesn't stand out too bright or too dark. It's the same color. I want to retain that. There. Okay, maybe, shoot, maybe over in here there's a few that go clean on up through. We don't know. Trees grow just however it makes them happy. There, just as many or as few as you want in your world. Maybe there's one, yep, you're right. Now, I get to ask quite frequently, is it best to make tree branches and limbs by pulling the brush down or going up? Doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. Some people will find that it works better one way for them, others will find it works better the other way. Try both ways. Find the one that works best for you and enjoy. There we are. Now then, you can go back to this brush that we use to do all this tapping and just tap here and there and soften a few of those so you don't see all of it. You just see little areas here and there. And that really helps push it back again. It makes it look even farther away, even more misty. All right. Now then, let's get the old round brush. The round brush is fun. Now then, I want to take, and far back in the distance, I'll grab a little green, be right back. Grab a little of that green. I want this very dark though. It's too bright, so I'm going to put a little bit of black into it. Maybe, maybe even a little of this lavender. There, I want this dark, because I want it very subdued. Very quiet. Don't want this to stand out and bite you. Okay, now then maybe back in here you can make out the indication just barely though of some basic little tree and bush shapes. Just barely though. But begin thinking about little individual things that are happening in here. There. <clears throat> As I say, these are very far back in the shadows, they're, they're quiet. Now, in your painting, maybe you want them brighter. If you do, all you have to do, add a little bit of the yellow, the yellow ochre, whatever. They'll get brighter on you. And against this black background, they'll jump out like a firecracker. Mm. But today, we want to keep them sort of subdued in this painting. Maybe up in here, we're beginning to see the indication of a few little things. We can drop those in also. All we're looking for is very, distant little shapes, very, very distant little shapes. There. Don't worry about it too much at this time, because you're not committed. You're certainly not committed. 
these trees right in this area, I'm going to leave them alone. I want them to remain that quiet, that subdued. They're going to be far, far away. Now you can do this with a multitude of colors. I just happen to like lavender today. But you can do it with any color you want. You could do it with pinks or blues or whatever makes you happy. <laughs> As you've heard me say a million times, painting should make you happy. If it doesn't make you happy, then something's wrong. You're doing the wrong thing. Doing the wrong thing. It's like working. The man that does the best job is the man who's happy at his job. Half my life, I did a job that I, I really wasn't happy with. Did it because I didn't, I didn't have anything else to do. And then I started doing this. And this has made me happier than anything that I've ever known. And painting can change your life. It can change everybody's life. I get letters every day from people who have discovered, that have discovered the show. Maybe, maybe they were, <laughs> maybe they were sick for a few days, or they were injured, and they happened to be laying at home and flipping the channels and they come upon the show and they sort of sort of get captivated by it and they continue to watch it and it has literally changed hundreds and hundreds thousands of people's lives I'm using a little green here on the big brush I get a lot of letters from people who have retired from an occupation and they want something to do with their time and this is one of the most fantastic things and I think everybody at one time or another in their life has had the desire to create something, to, to put something on canvas. And we make it very simple here. You can do it. I'm just going to tap in some little soft little grassy areas. Right in there. Maybe it comes right on back. Wherever you want them. Just sort of think about it. But I want them to get very, very dark away from that light area up here. Back in here, quiet, quiet, quiet. Barely, barely can't even see them. Very quiet. And this is where we begin worrying about things like the lay of the land and how the land flows. Now the more you tap this, the darker it'll become because it'll pick up that lavender color that you have underneath. And it'll literally just disappear, basically. If you tap long enough, it'll go in and leave you. There we are. Okay. I'll tell you what. Maybe there's a little path in here. That's just a perfect place for a little path. We'll take a little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna. A little touch of little touch of yellow in it. Not much. I mean white. I'm sorry, I said yellow. Oh, when you get old, the mind goes. There we are. Pull it out flat. Cut across. We get our little roll of paint right out here. Now then, if we're going to have a little path in here, let's just take, barely touching the canvas, just caress it, rub it gently, there, see, and make some decisions. Where does this little path live? Where does it go? You have to decide those things. In your world, you have absolute and total power. And this canvas is your world, and you can do anything here. Anything that you want to do. All you have to do is have a vision in your mind, be willing to practice a little bit, and place it on canvas. Now, that'll give us basic, basic shape for a path. Now I'm going to take a clean, dry brush, and very lightly, very lightly, I want to just make this a little more subdued, a little more quiet. So just by gently, gently brushing it, that easy. It'll become much, much softer. And once again, it's picking up that lavender color that's underneath, and automatically it'll get darker and darker. Okay, a little more of my dark green here with a two inch brush. And just push that brush. It gets that little ridge of paint right out on the right out on the edge of the bristles. And that's what you're actually painting with. Okay, let's go right up here. Once again, begin thinking about the lay of the land here. See, by putting that in, it pushes the path back because it's in front, working layers. Do the thing in 
in your mind the farthest away and then work forward, forward, forward. There we go. See, we just let that disappear back in here somewhere. All right. The reason I started putting this liquid clear on the black before I put color in, I've got so many letters from people saying that it's so difficult to put this very dry, firm paint over black that they either get too much or, <laughs> or like me, the arm gives out before they get it all on. If you put just the least, and I can't say that enough, the least little touch of the liquid clear on first, then your color will literally just slide on. But probably the biggest single mistake made is applying too much. Too much. Let's go on the other side here. And if you apply too much, oh, it's worse than not having any. So be very sparing with it. Be very careful. Be a Scrooge with it. Hang on to it. There we are. Now then, we can just take a fan brush and just gently go in here and bring all this together very lightly, very delicately. Just bring it together. Now look how that path just goes right on back. It does because this is brighter back here than it is here plus the fact that it gets larger as it comes toward you. And it looks like you could walk a million miles back in there, and you've really done very, very little. Very, very little. i tell you what, let's do. Take my old fan brush, we'll just use it. I'm gonna take, let me find a place to work here. Got too many things going on. Let's take some Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna. We'll put a little black in it too. I just want a dark, dark brown. Basically all we're looking for, very dark brown. Let me clean my knife off. I just wipe the old knife on a paper towel. We use a fan brush today. You could use whatever fan brush looks good today. Maybe in our world here, maybe there lives a very large tree right here. Right here. I know that's hard to see. It's so dark, but it's there. It is there. And maybe he's got a friend, uh, you know me and my friends. Yep, just sort of, just sort of take a look, see, and think where, think where a friend would live. Drop it in. Drop it in. Like so. There we go. There. All right. I hope you saw the show earlier where we showed our contest winners. We had that little contest in, through our newsletter, and son of a gun, we had some beautiful paintings. Maybe there's one right there. I was so impressed. It's such a privilege to share that with you, because there's people all over the country that are doing some of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. And only a few months, maybe a year or two ago, they never believed that they could paint anything. You can do anything that you want to do. And it just, it, it excites me so much. It's, I get excited just talking about it, but the fact that people are able to accomplish this because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. There. That'll give us some big trees. We need a forest there, so we'll just lay this brush down. Now then. I'll take some white, some white, some white, some dark sienna. Maybe the least, least little touch of bright red. Just, just enough to stain it a little bit. Notice all the different colors happening in there. Cut across our little roll of paint as usual. Now then, let's just put in some highlights. Just barely let the night. If you've painted mountains with me before, all you're doing here is laying snow on the mountain. It's the same exact stroke, same touch. You just barely, barely caress the canvas. Just barely touch it. Barely, barely touch it. Okay, now then, maybe here's one. Just let it flow right down the tree. Boop, boop, boop. Like so. Like so. Isn't that a super way of making a very effective little tree? A little bit back here. I don't want as much back here. I want him to remain sort of hidden. You can see him, you know he's there, but he's a little farther back. Let's go on the other side. These trees over here. Now, to me, the light source is right here in the center. 
so light would come in both directions through there. So we can go over here and we can highlight this side of the tree. There we are. Something like so. So a knife works just as well one side as it does the other. There. Okay, a little bit back in here. Doop, doop, doop. Now, then. sometimes it's fun to take a tiny little bit of blue and white and just here and there, here and there, add a little touch of blue on the far side of the tree to indicate reflected light. That's nice sometimes. There. Let's go on the other side, do the same thing, just here and there. I'm not going to put a whole bunch in, just enough that you know it's there. And it's fun to go back with your dark brown, and you can just tap, and you can bring it all together. You can make some of the most beautiful tree trunks this way, just tapping. That dark will allow you to blend these colors all together, and they look real. They look like they, you could touch them. Let's go on the other side and do a couple. Then we'll get serious here. We have to decide what we're going to do with this painting pretty soon. All right, take a large brush, and down here around the bottom of the trees, put a little bit of grass. That'll sort of just blend it all together. A little over here, and here, and wherever. Shoot, we got a forest there. Okay, we'll take a liner brush. We'll use a little bit of Van Dyke brown, or black, or whatever. We don't care. Just Van Dyke brown. Make it thin like ink again. Maybe so it'll show up. I'll add at least a little touch of white to it. Just so it'll show up. Let's see now. Maybe there's some... Let's make us... Yeah, that shows up all right. There's a nice little tree limb right out through there. Put another one over in here. And as many or as few as you want. Back here in this little tree, it needs some little limbs that stick out. He's got to have an arm, too. He needs an arm. Maybe one of these days we can have one hour shows and I can show you even more things. I get a lot of people writing and saying, is there any way you could keep this show on longer? I wish there was. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. In the meantime, we, we do create a whole line of instructional videos which are different than the television shows. And they do a lot more teaching. So maybe that will help. Some of them are as much as three hours long. There, a little more of the paint thinner. And let's go over here, and we'll do the same thing. Like so. There. You know, I have to share with you something that I'm extremely, extremely excited about. We're, we have just finished writing our first hardcover book, which will, gosh, I think it'll be out by the time this comes out. I think it'll be out, and the book will be in all the bookstores, and then I'm just thrilled to death over this because it's some things that I've wanted to do and I've never had the opportunity before. I think you'll enjoy that. All right, now then, let's take, let's just use a, a one-inch brush. We'll take a least little bit of the liquid white, go into some yellow, some yellow, a little bit of sap green, a little yellow ochre too. What the heck? I want to just put the indication of a few little leaves up here. I don't want to lose this background. So I just want to put some nice little leafy things that are living here and there on these trees. Just here and there. Like that. Don't let them get too bright on you. Just a few. Just a few. There we go. On the other side, let's drop in a couple over here. Okay, couple in there. All right. I think maybe, I think maybe today we'll have some fun. Let's get brave. Let's get brave. We got a minute or two left here, so I'll show you something else we can do. Tell you what, let me find, okay, we'll use this. Here's a, this is a filbert brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of the bright red. Maybe in our world, let's get brave. Come right down here. Maybe we'll take and just do that. 
something like so, like that. And then we'll go right over here and get a little bit of, this is just yellow ochre. And we'll do something like so. Okay, now then, we'll just have some fun. What the heck, maybe? There. Like that. I'm just wiping the brush in between. We'll use a dark color over here. Like that. And I'm going to get the liner brush, a little bit of paint thinner. I'm going to go into, we'll go into black. Have you figured out what that is yet? We'll just go into a little bit of black, come right up here. Look at there. Maybe, maybe we have a, a lady there, has nice long hair. So you can put little indications of people in there. That easy. Here's one over here. We better give her a head. She's probably going to get upset if she doesn't have one. Any ideas? There we are. This one's got a little bit bushier hair. It's not as long. Okay. A few little accents here and there. Whatever. And maybe we have now two ladies who are walking along here looking at this beautiful scene. Put a little hat on that one. What the heck? There. But that'll give you an idea of a very simple, very simple way of putting a couple of people in your painting. Hope you Hope you enjoy that and we'll try it. I think we'll sign this one. Use a little bright red, a little paint thinner, liner brush, and we'll sign it. And when you sign your painting, you just remember that a hundred years from now, somebody will look at this painting and know you were having a fantastic day. And on this day, you experience the joy of painting. Happy painting and God bless, my friend.